Good morning. Are there things in your life, your world, that you can't explain? Let me throw something at you here. The other day, I was noting in our community, which I have before, that there are certain people that don't get their individual mailbox. I don't know why. We did. It's nice. We go down to the street right by our house and get it. But on several of the other streets, there's these group boxes that hold like eight people's mail. And two days ago, I thought, you know what's really weird is all the time that I spend walking through this neighborhood, and I walk a lot in my neighborhood, I've never seen anybody getting mail out of there or the mail person putting anything in there. In the last two days, I have now seen the mail truck stop six times by those boxes putting mail in. Huh. I texted that to my wife and I said, that's weird, isn't it? And then I knew that what she was thinking. She wasn't thinking so much that that was weird. She was thinking it's weird that I noticed something like that, which I can't argue with. But, you know, it's possible that maybe you kind of find what you're looking for. You find that in life? Jesus talked about that. Seek and you will find. Knock, the door will be open to you. Yeah, I think what we look for, what we really want to find, we find. What I'm suggesting is maybe I saw it before, but I guess really wasn't paying attention. So, you know, there is that old expression by Art Linkletter. If you remember Art Linkletter, you know what that means. You're old. But Art Linkletter used to say, the kids say the darndest things. Well, when I was in first grade, I received my first Holy Communion, St. Raymond's Church, Mount Prospect, Illinois. And I don't remember a whole lot about it, but I'm going to walk you through a little bit. So I remember I had my mom, I don't know if she's my sponsor or something, she was behind me. And when I walked up, the priest held up the host and said the body of Christ, and then he fumbled it. He dropped it, but the altar boy was there with the gold-plated thing, and he caught it. And <laughs> what I remember is that my mom put her hand on my shoulder like that. Kind of freaked me out when she did it. Like, I don't know if she thought I was going to run away or something like that. I was like, chill, Mom. You know, I got this. I'm going to be a preacher someday. No. It's the last thing that I thought. But we found an old newspaper, like school newspaper, and it had quotes from the first graders that were receiving their first communion. Do you know what I said? My statement was, receiving Jesus into my life was the most wonderfulest thing ever. Most wonderfulest. Receiving Jesus into my life. I don't ever remember thinking anything like that, but that's what I said. It's amazing. I think God's Spirit was at work in my life in a way and at an age when I had no idea, because I was not the kid that liked going to church growing up. Sometimes I actually prayed to not go to church. I'm thinking, I don't know how God hears that prayer. What, what do we do with this one? This kid's praying not to go to church. And I can remember people like would go to youth group, and it's so ironic because I ended up doing youth stuff for so many years. And I just thought, why would anybody go to church any more than you had to go on Sunday morning? And then 1975 rolled around. And what's really amazing to me is I wouldn't have called myself a Christ follower yet, but I came across this, this coral and silver cross out in Wickenburg, Arizona. And it cost $97 in 1975. And I didn't spend any money. I was a miser. I just saved everything that I had, just put everything in the bank. But I spent $97 on this cross. A few months later, my brother had a pretty, pretty radical conversion, became a Jesus freak. About 12 months later, I invited Christ into my life. Made a huge difference. But I can't explain why I would have bought this cross, why it would have been that important to me. But I think it's because God was kind of working on my heart. God, from the time I was in first grade, was working on my heart. And I was very favorably disposed towards Jesus. Do you see things like that happening in your life? God just might be trying to get your attention. And I mentioned this Sunday morning that I, I love the passage in Colossians where it says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. What I figured out when I was 17 years old is I can't be a Christian without Christ. I need him to do an inside job in me, to do the transforming work, his work of grace in my life. My prayer is that he does the same thing for you. God bless you. Have a great day.